This video was made possible by Squarespace. Have you ever wondered what the most used Pokemon are in terms of playthroughs? Not the ones used in competitive, but Pokemon you're most likely to see in someone's in-game team. Well, I think I may have figured out what the most used Pokemon teams are for each Pokemon main series game. Now obviously there's no real way to find out what is factually the most used team for each game. However, we can definitely get a somewhat good idea. So to figure out what team is the most used for each Pokemon game, let's start with the obvious, figuring out which starter was picked the most in each Pokemon game. So to try and get some more accurate answers, I ran polls on both my Twitter account and YouTube community tab, asking people which starter they picked for each game. And crazily enough, the percentages on YouTube and Twitter were almost identical, meaning that these results most likely are pretty accurate. So, now that we have a pretty good idea at which starters were the most used for each game, what about the rest of the team? Well, to try and get as accurate results as possible, I created a form where people could list which Pokemon they picked for their in-game teams for each game. Some results were very obvious, and some not so much. So, let's get started with the Kanto games. The first Kanto team we're going to go through is for Red, Blue, Green, Fire Red and Leaf Green. I think we all knew that Charmander was going to win the starter poll, but what about the rest of the team? Probably the most popular Pokemon I found outside of the starter was Nidoking. It makes sense as well, given how early in the game you can find a Nidoran, it learns Double Kick for Brock's Gym, and Nidoking is just a cool looking Pokemon. For the next team member, one of the first Pokemon you're able to catch is Pidgey. Not only is it one of the most iconic bird Pokemon, but given that Charizard couldn't learn Fly until Pokemon Yellow, making Pidgeot the most likely candidate to be the player's flyer in Kanto, especially compared to other mons that could learn Fly, makes perfect sense. It was also very popular in the anime. Next up we have Raichu. Not only is Pikachu the mascot, but it can be found pretty early on in Viridian Forest. It was one of the rarer spawns, but of course that would make people want to catch it. An extremely popular late game pick was Snorlax. There were only a couple of them available in the game, and given how popular and strong Snorlax is, also not that surprising to see it on the team. Finally, for the player Surfer. The main water types I found to be popular in Kanto was Blastoise, Gyarados and Lapras. Blastoise is excluded since we have Charizard as the starter. Gyarados at first make the most sense, since you can buy a magic up pretty early in the game. However, I found Lapras to be way more popular of a choice. Even though you do get Lapras somewhat late in the game, it is rare, being a gift Pokemon, and I do see people buying a Magikarp and then not wanting to waste time evolving it. So, this is my pick for the most used team for Red, Blue, Green and the Remix. However, Pokemon Yellow and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee have enough differences where the teams would be pretty different. With Pikachu being the starter for Pokemon Yellow, this gives the possibility of the Kanto team having no starter on it, or having all three starters on it. Usually being able to use three starter Pokemon on one team isn't possible, unless you trade. However, given how popular all three of these Pokemon are, it's pretty safe to say that the majority of people, including myself, took advantage of this, making Pikachu and the three Kanto starters pretty easy picks for the yellow team. The last two slots, Snorlax I predict still being a popular choice, given how rare it is in the game. And for the last slot, I found Nidoking way too popular to leave out. Pikachu is basically useless against Brock, so Nidoking makes sense. And this would be the team I most likely see being used for Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Let's Go Eevee on the other hand would obviously be a little bit more different. Instead of Pikachu, we'd have Eevee, and instead of Snorlax, we'd have Raichu. Some other popular Pokemon I found for Kanto that didn't make the cut for any of the teams were Arcanine was the most popular fire type, if it wasn't for Charizard, although it was also a version exclusive, making it a bit more difficult. Dragonite took a lot of time and effort to obtain and evolve, so didn't quite make the cut. Jolteon was easily the most popular evolution, and would have been the electric type of the team if it wasn't for Pikachu. And Hitmonlee is given to you at the dojo, but just wasn't quite as popular as some other choices. Moving on to Gold, Silver, Crystal and the Remix, the most popular Johto starter was easily Cyndaquil. Chikorita unfortunately had no chance. And there was another water type I knew was going to be on the team over for Alligator, that water type being the Red Gyarados. Let's be real, we all wanted to use this on our team. A free shiny that was not only iconic but looked great, it was given. Next up is Ampharos. 
The Marip line is one of the most popular in Johto, especially from the electric type options, and Ampharos was no surprise one of the most popular picks. For the flyer of the team, the obvious choice was Crobat. It's much cooler than its pre-evolutions, and even the regional bird, and it's just a very popular cool Johto mon overall. The next team member, I had some options, and the one that ended up winning by a lot was Heracross. Now this Pokemon is a headbutt encounter only, which made me question whether to have it on the team, since it can sometimes be quite rare. However, you can find it in a lot of different areas, and I think the anime did make people want a Heracross. That and, since Heracross was one of the most voted for Pokemon, I kind of had to put it on the team. And the last Johto member we have is... Lugia. Not really surprising to see a box legend on the team, and Lugia was easily the more popular of the two. And there's the most used team I picked for Johto. Other Johto Pokemon that were considered was Feraligator, losing out to Typhlosion, Noctowl, losing out to Crobat, Dragonite was much easier to obtain in Johto than Kanto, but still suffered from taking too long to evolve. Tyranitar had some mentions, however you can only get one at the very late end of the game. Jolteon was also popular, but did lose out to Ampharos, and the Johto evolutions. I almost picked Umbreon over Heracross, however Heracross was answered way more than Umbreon, despite how popular Umbreon is. That and Umbreon's evolution method I see not being the easiest for some people. Moving on to Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald, all three starters could have easily have been picked. In the end, it was between Sceptile and Swampert, and Swampert ended up winning, given how popular Mudkip was, as well as Swampert being by far the most popular surfer in the game. Mainetric was also picked, Electric being a cool electric type that players could get somewhat early on, it made a lot of sense. Next we have Gardevoir, very clearly one of the most popular Hoenn Pokemon easily, it's also a rare spawn early in the game, where Wally finds his rots, so wouldn't be surprised if some people wanted to also find their rots in that location. Next up is Breloom. This would be the grass member of the team, and was surprisingly popular among votes. The last two team members were almost unanimously picked, being Agron and Flygon. Agron I see almost being the Nidoking of Hoenn, a cool looking beefy three stage evolution that's overall pretty popular, and Flygon was the most popular choice for a flyer. So this is the most used team pick for Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald. The remakes on the other hand changes things just a bit. When the game was released, a certain event Pokemon was given to players, being a shiny Beldum. Metacross is one of the most popular Hoenn shinies, as well as getting a brand new Mega, so Metacross I had to put on the Auras team, replacing Agron as the Steel type. So despite there not being many changes, that would be the team for the Hoenn remakes. Other popular choices were Linoon, being a great HM slave, Camerupt being the most popular fire type other than Blaziken, but not as popular as other choices, Altaria losing out to Flygon, Rayquaza, no surprise there, and finally, Swallow. I had Swallow on the team for the longest time, however, found that it fell off as we went through each Hoenn team member, leading me to believe that most people caught a Taillow early on, may have had Swellow as their flyer early game, and then replaced Swellow later with a better flyer, in this case being Flygon. So while I definitely see Swellow being part of the team, it ultimately had to be cut by just a little bit. For black and white, it's a pretty interesting case. The most popular Unova starter overall was Oshawott, so we start with Samurott. I did consider the regional bird being Unpheasant, however found it was definitely not the most popular flyer of the team. Instead, Archeops was picked. I found it to be by far the more popular fossil, and the most common pick when it came to a flyer. Fossils are pretty easy to get in the game, so it made sense that people picked Archeops. Additionally, Substriker was also pretty popular, being an early electric type you could find in Unova, a bit more so than the other electric type options. Next up is Crocodile, easily one of, if not the most popular Pokemon according to my survey, and in general. I'm pretty sure it was the most voted for Unova. Two fire types that really stood out were Darmanitan and Chandelure, but in the end, Chandelure just edged out. It's a pretty unique design that's still loved by players. And for the last team member, Haxorus was definitely a popular choice. Not really surprising it ended up being on the team. So this is the team for Black and White 1. Black and White 2 definitely changes things up. 
Samurott is still the starter of choice. However, unlike the Black and White games, Black and White 2 had quite the number of past generation Pokemon available near the beginning of the game, which definitely influenced a lot of people's teams. The first and most obvious one being Riolu. Players, including myself, really wanted Lucario on their team. And since almost every Black and White 2 team I saw had Lucario, this was a pretty easy pick. Another popular past generation Pokemon available in the same area as Riolu was Mareep, leading to Ampharos being the electric type of the team. For the fire type, I was surprised to see that Arcanine was picked the most. It was again another past generation Pokemon, available somewhat early in the game, and was apparently used by a lot of people. A Pokemon returning from the Black and White 1 team is Crocodile, still one of the more popular Unova Pokemon, and also still one of the most voted. No surprise there. And the last team member is of course Zoroark. This Pokemon wasn't really available to players to have on their team in the first Black and White, but it is in the sequel, and given how iconic Zoroark is, no surprise it was a popular choice. And that's the team for Black and White 2. Other Unova options were Stoutland, being somewhat popular at the beginning of the game, but falling off later, Excadrill, losing out quite badly to Crocodile, Darmanitan and Volcarona, being other fire type options, Unpheasant, being an early game Pokemon, and Flying Choice, Electros and Galvantula, being popular electric type choices, Flygon was another very popular past generation starter, that also most likely would have been the flyer of the team and Seismitoad. Shockingly. Now before we continue, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're looking to start your own brand or business online, Squarespace is the best place to do it, and stand out by creating your very own website. Squarespace's all-in-one platform gives you almost endless ways to customize your own brand to look as sleek and as professional as possible. The site gives you a bunch of templates to start out, with according to whatever site you're making, whether it be gaming, music, or pretty much anything you want, you're able to adjust the site to how you want it to look, adding text, images, buttons that do stuff, and even better, you're able to see what your site will look like on a computer or mobile. There's no place that makes creating a brand new professional website easier. So go to squarespace.com to start a free trial, and if you use the promo code Aura signing up, you'll save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. For X and Y, Greninja and Charizard were overwhelmingly the most popular first and second picks. It wasn't really close, so not surprising they're the first two on the team. Next we have Lucario yet again, it's gifted to us in the game, as well as being our first Pokemon that we Mega Evolve. One of the most voted Pokemon for sure. Aegislash is also added to the team, Another very popular Pokemon, introduced in X and Y with a fun gimmick. Next up is Tyrantrum, easily the most popular of the two fossils, and I think a T-Rex Pokemon was always going to be popular choice. And for the sixth member of the team, we have the Box Legendary. Both of them were pretty much the top two choices for the last slot, so not too surprising that the Box Legend ends up being the final pick. And here we have the Kalos team. Other popular picks were Talonflame, it was actually really close between Talonflame and Charizard, but ultimately ended up going with Charizard. The event Blaziken, that was distributed on release, but again, Charizard. Flaugius and Sylveon, being pretty popular fairy types, and Gudra, having to evolve it at a high level, and specifically in the rain, I see being pretty annoying for people. On to 7th gen. The most popular Alola starter is obviously Rowlet, giving us Decidueye. The next most likely Pokemon is definitely Lycanroc. It's a popular Alola Pokemon that was advertised quite a bit, and in Ultra Sun and Moon was an early event for us to get the Dusk form, so Lycanroc is a given. Next up we have both the regional bird and the regional bug of the game. Vikavolt and Toucanon were overall mentioned a lot, so I had to add them. Salazzle was easily the most popular fire type, and despite the gender ratio being possibly quite difficult for players to evolve their Salandit, it was still one of the most dimensioned Pokemon, so also made the list. And the last Pokemon was a bit of a toss up, but the most popular final pick ended up being Kamo'o, not only the pseudo legend of the game, but was also advertised as our first dragon fighting type, so it made sense that people would have waited to eventually have one on their team. And that is our completed Alola team. Some Pokemon that just missed out on the list was Mimikyu. If there was a 7th spot, it would have definitely gone to Mimikyu. Alolan Raichu, being the most popular Alolan form for sure. Golisopod, that would have probably have made the list if Vagavolt wasn't so popular. Monstale was also a popular choice, but just missed out. 
and both the box legends. They were picked a lot for the final slot, but of course, lost to Komoo. For Sword and Shield, Score Bunny was the clear starter favourite, giving a Cinderace for the team. The most voted Gala Pokemon by quite a margin was Corviknight. It's the regional bird, you can get it pretty early on, and, I mean, look at it. No wonder it's one of the most popular bird Pokemon ever at this point. Toxtricity was also an obvious pick. It's one of the most popular Gen 8 Pokemon for sure, with two forms for people to choose from. Next up is Grimmsnarl. Impidimp was a very popular Pokemon in the advertisements of the game, so it would make sense that Grimmsnarl would be more popular. Even more so than its psychic counterpart. Dragapult is one of the most popular pseudo legends. Usually pseudos don't end up on the team, given how late they're available in the game, and usually takes a lot of levels to evolve. But given Dragapult's amazing typing, design, and the amount of people who picked it, makes sense that it was on most people's team. And the last Pokemon on the team is Dreadnought. A bit less popular than the other picks, but was still picked quite a lot. Most likely made popular from the advertisements, since it was one of the first Gen 8 Pokemon we saw. And here is the team for Gala. The runners-up were Boltund, losing out to Toxtricity, Hatterin, losing out to Grimmsnarl, Centerscorch and Corlossal, losing out to Cinderace, and Obstagoon. I'm sure people were excited to see Linoon's new evolution in action. It was between Obstacoon and Dreadnought, but I think sharing the dark typing with Grimmsnarl meant that most of the time it wouldn't be on the same team, so barely just got cut. Legends Arceus was probably the hardest Pokemon game to calculate in terms of the most common team, given the variety of generations we had to pick from, but I still got a really good idea. Cyndaquil was the most popular starter according to my starter polls, making Hisui and Typhlosion our first pick. Hisui and Zoroark was one of the first Pokemon I thought was going to make the list. Zoroark is pretty difficult to find, and shares the ghost typing with Typhlosion, but given how popular it is, it made the most sense to also have on the list. Another Pokemon that was very popular was Luxray, not surprising especially how early you can get Shinx in the game, and was overall one of, if not the most voted Pokemon. Along with Zoroark, the other most popular Hisuian form was Gudra. Gumi is pretty easy to find in the game, as well as there being an Alpha Hisuian Slagoo that we can come across. Next is Ursaluna. I think people were really happy to see that Ursaring got an evolution, so it made sense that it also made the team. And the sixth pick is Cleavar. Scyther you can get really early in the game, and Cleavor was advertised as Scyther's new evolution, so definitely understand that people wanted to use one. And that is the team that I believe was the most used for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Other popular Pokemon were Staraptor, being available super early in the game. Wordeer was also mentioned for fixing Stantler. Asui and Arcanine, losing out to Typhlosion. Sneasler, being a cool alternative to Weavile. And Garchomp, for obvious reasons. Finally, the most used Scarlet and Violet team. This one was pretty hard to decide on, because it went one of two ways. The starter was between Skeledurge and Miascarada, with Skeledurge being more popular overall. However, Seraledge was also one of the most popular Pokemon, and I don't think a lot of people had both Skeledurge and Seruledge on the same team, given that they share both the same types. So in the end, I decided to go with Skeledurge, as popular as Surulege is, it is a version exclusive, even if Violet version was more popular than Scarlet version. And some people didn't even know how to evolve Charge Cadet without looking it up. So we're going the Skeledurge route. The next team member is Clodsire. You can get Paldean Wooper pretty early in the game, and of course people wanted to see what it looked like and loved what it became. Probably one of the most popular Gen 9 Pokemon. Another extremely popular Pokemon, and probably the most devoted, was Tinkerton. This was a no-brainer. I think everyone would agree, Tinkerton is arguably the most used Pokemon in the game. No question. Next is Kilowattrel. The regional bird is usually popular on most teams. You don't find Wattrel at the very beginning of the game, but it is still a pretty easy find. One Pokemon that was surprisingly popular was Garganical. Garganacle, however you say it. I didn't expect it to be nearly as popular as it was, but apparently a lot of people had it on their team, so no arguments there. And the sixth member is Baxcalibur. I was pretty skeptical on this, since Frigibax isn't the easiest Pokemon to find, and evolves a bit late, but given that you can technically find it early depending on the route you take, and the amount of people that said that Baxcalibur was their final team member, including myself, it was picked way more than other choices. So 
This is the team for Scarlet and Violet. However, the team could have also looked like this, given how popular Serilege was, with Miascarada as the starter. So either works, but the Skeledurge team is probably the most popular. A Pokemon that just missed out was Pormut. It was quite a popular choice, but ultimately lost out to Kilowattrol. And those are what I have picked for the most used teams for each Pokemon game. Do you agree with my picks? If not, let me know if you think I missed something out. And if you did enjoy, please do leave a like, as it does help the video out. Subscribe for more Pokemon videos in the future. Follow me on all my socials, so you in the future could take part in a poll or survey for another video. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.